Welcome to Advanced Data Analysis 2 with me, Eric Erhardt, Professor of Statistics at the University of New Mexico. In this video, I'll help get you started with Class 13 on Polynomial Regression. So I'll scroll down to Class 13 on Polynomial Regression, and we have a markdown file and a data file to save to our Data Analysis folder. We will open our studio. open the markdown file, set the working directory, and knit it. Let's see. I'm going to paste the path in here. 13. Set the working directory, and knit. This is, a sign, is, is an assignment where you're going to do quite a bit of coding. Some of you may be saying it's about time. Eric, you give us too much, and others of you are going to, say, going to be nervous. That's okay. So here's the data set. So Joseph Hooker collected the following data in 1840s on the boiling point of water and the atmospheric pressure at 31 locations in the Himalayas. Boiling point is measured in degrees Fahrenheit. The pressure is recording in inches of mercury, adjusted for the difference between the ambient air pressure when he took the measurements and a standard, standard temperature. And the goal was to develop a model to predict atmospheric temperature from the boiling point. And I'll let you read the historical note. So we read the data set in, and there are two lines at the beginning which are not part of the data set. Um, it may be worth just taking a quick peek at that so you can see what the data look like. <clears throat> but you can see that there are uh, comments in those first two lines. So the data actually start on line three, so we skip the first two lines from the file. I'm also um, going to center the boiling po point in Fahrenheit by subtracting the mean. Um, this has a, a useful benefit later on when we do the polynomial regression in that we get meaningful hypothesis tests of lower order effects if you fit a polynomial. If you do not center your predictor variables and you fit you know, x plus x squared plus x cubed, the only hypothesis test you can interpret is the highest one, x cubed. You couldn't interpret the test for the lower orders. But if you first subtract the mean, then you can interpret all the hypothesis tests. All right, the mean that we have for boiling point is 191, which of course is lower than uh, what we think of as the boiling point of water of 212, um, because that's at standard temperature and pressure or excuse me, it's standard pressure, which is sea level. <clears throat> All right, so we've got the uh, boiling point in Fahrenheit. We have the pressure, and we have the centered variable that we just created. All right, we're going to start by um, plotting the data, and I give you the, um, the plot for this. Really? I just give you the... <laughs> Hopefully I ask you to, to do something else. All right, so try to implement these features by putting some plots in here. I believe I've, I've done that for you. That's really nice of me. I'll give you the first plot to get you started, in particular to illustrate a nice use of the caption to annotate. Okay, so what I've done now, let's see if I can get, let's look at the plot first and then we'll look at the code. So I've got pressure on the y-axis. That's what we're trying to estimate, inches of mercury. We have boiling point on the horizontal. I've um, on the top axis. I have the centered temperature. Isn't that cool? So there's the zero point. That's the mean, and I've drawn a vertical line there. Now the blue line, which I've indicated down in the caption, is the straight line regression. Right. So a simple linear regression, which is a straight line. The red dashed line is a lowest smoothed curve. So lowest is going to give you um, a way to follow curve, curving tendencies of the data points. 
And you can see there's sort of a concave up um, shape to this. All right, let's look at some of the code that produced that plot. Uh, the X is the boiling point, Y is the pressure. Okay, nothing interesting yet. Um, let's skip a couple things. So the vertical line at the X intercept is the mean boiling point. Okay, so that's that gray vertical line here. We have the blue line, which is the method equals LM for linear mo model. We have the red line, which is line type 2, which is the dashed line. That's the lowest smooth curve. We've plotted the points on the top, so the black points fall on top of the, the lines. And the last part, the fan sort of the fancy part here, is the scale x continuous, and I've asked for a second axis, and that axis is sort of similar to the first, except we subtract off the mean of the boiling point. And that's what creates the center value of zero here at the top. And we've also labeled it with this name, boiling F centered, up here. All right, so I guess everyone gets two points for free. All right, next, fit a simple linear regression and assess the model assumptions. So this is just a standard simple linear regression, y tilde x. All right, so let's read the rest of this so that we're looking ahead. Provide the output for examining residuals, outliers, and influential observations. Okay, so we'll create the residual plots, basically. Looking at the plots, are there any indications that the mean pressure is not linearly related to boiling point? Are there any observations that appear to be highly influential to fit, uh, influencing the fit of the model? Are there certain points or regions of the data where the model appears not to fit well. So all of this will come from an assessment of the residuals. Which, if any, of the standard linear regression model assumptions appear to be violated in this analysis? If you believe that some of the assumptions are violated, does it appear that deleting one or two points would improve the fit? Uh, or would you use this model for predicting, I, okay, would you pred use this model for predicting pressure and discuss, okay? So uh, we're going to learn a lot in this example. I really, really like this example. So we need to start writing some code. So I'm going to page down beyond the plot to where we fit the model and, um, and look at the residual plot. So I'm not going to write code from scratch. I'll, I'll go to a, a previous assignment where we've done this work before. So let's just go back. Um, to any of these previous assignments, uh, just this one at random, where we fit a regression model. And I'm going to just page down. Oops, not this one, though, because that one doesn't give us <clears throat> the code for the regression model. Let's try this one instead. So we'll find the regression model. OK, here we go. And we'll paste it down here. We'll create, I think, Control I? Nope. How do you do an, a new code chunk? Insert chunk. Control Alt I. Inserts the chunk. So there's some starting code. And then if I go back, let's also find the residuals, residual plots here. You know what? There's. I don't love what I'm doing here. Let me actually open up the markdown file because I want the code chunk options as well. So let's just copy that part for the, so I realize I'm redoing what I just did, but, and then the plotting here, those code options of the figure height and width, I like those settings. So let's keep that. And is there anything else? There's the ANOVA here. I don't think really we care about the ANOVA part. Instead, I think we're going to do a summary and not do this type three stuff and we don't need the car package. And might as well put the summary <clears throat> up here with the linear model. Okay, so I think we've got the things that we that we want. You know what, I'm gonna undo that. I think I like the summary down here. All right, fit the model, look at the diagnostics, look at the summary of the model. Okay, so now we just need to put in our variables. Uh, let's run the code down to here. 
pretty sure I clicked on that. Interesting, it's not running. Okay, let's see if we can run this part. Okay, that, that one worked. Scroll down, make this plot. It barely fits in there. All right, now we've got pressure. So this, let's look at the structure of the data set here, boil. So we've got pressure as the Y variable. And we've got the boiling point, boiling uh, temperature in Fahrenheit as the x-axis. We have the date dat boil. I realize that this would have been shorter just to type it, but pressure versus boiling. Okay, we'll do linear model of that and we'll do a summary of that. All right. Let's run this. Good. All right, now I'm ready to knit it. It will be easier to review the diagnostic plots in the HTML file. Uh, let's see, the collinearity plot only available. Okay, so maybe we don't really care about collinearity here in the plot. So in this function that I wrote, um, there are some options. So if we just put the name of the function down there and press enter, it will print the function to the screen. And I can scroll up to some of the documentation that I have at the top of the function. And in terms of the plot set, okay? So we can choose which plots we want, I think. Let's see, the simple, let's do simple, doesn't matter. Simple AV will be fine. Okay, so SW plot set equals simple AV. Oops. So we'll add that as an argument or as an option here. So if we run this now, it should not try to make that other plot, and it works just fine. Good. Okay, I will knit it now. So it was trying to produce a plot that... Um, so the, the the thing that didn't work about the um, collinearity plot is there. there's only one variable on, the, on this side. Hmm, interesting. Okay, error and parse. I'm going to keep all this in the video because it's good to see me work out some of these errors. Error and parse, line 153, so that's this down here. Summary, oh, you know what? I don't have three ticks at the at the bottom here. That's better. <clears throat> so if I didn't have three ticks, it was trying to interpret everything else down here as code. And obviously it isn't. Okay, good. So we fit the model. Let's look at our residuals. What do we think about these residuals? We've got, um, looks like we've got some curvature here. Uh, it doesn't look too bad, right? There's nothing that's outside the bounds. Cook's distance, there's a couple points that sort of have a lot of influence relative to others. So this certainly looks like a problem, especially point observation one. Looks like observation one is highly influential has a large Cook's distance because it is an outlier in the X direction. Um, oh boy, here we go. Look at that massive curvature. That is very clearly curvature. It's um, curved in terms of the fitted values and the residuals are curved in terms of the boiling point. This is really lack of fit right here. And this curvature suggests a couple of strategies. One is we could take, because it's like looks like a parabola, in, in terms of boiling point, we could add boiling point squared in the model. Um, other options are, by looking at the box Cox plot, this suggests that we transform the Y variable to the zeroth power, which is defined as the log transform. So you could also take the log of Y and fit that model. Okay, so there's those two big things stand out. 
<clears throat> um, add a variable plot. Is that what this is? I think so. Um, basically, it doesn't tell us anything because there's no other variables. Instead, this is the same as the regression line. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, notice, though, look at the R squared. 99%. So, a very important distinction for you is that multiple R squared does not tell you anything about the fit of the model. This model that we just fit explains 99.2% of the variability in pressure by, by the regression on boiling point. 99%. You might be tempted to stop, but even though this model makes very, very precise predictions, the model does not fit the data. In fact, if we get a model that fits the data, we'll do much better. So, um, so lack there is major lack of fit here, and that's what we're going to address. All right, so let's uh, scroll up for a second and make sure we've discussed all the points that we need to. Looking at the plot, are there any indications that mean pressure is not linearly related? Absolutely, the uh, residual plots show that there's um, lack of fit. Um, are there any observations that are highly influential? It seems that those observation one, two, and three are much more influential than others, um, but that's largely because of the of the lack of fit of that curvature. So I wouldn't really, I don't think these these observations on the end are troublemakers. It's really that the whole model doesn't fit the, the data points. Um, let's see, are there certain points or regions of the data where their model does not appear to fit well? Yeah, so that's uh, on the ends, on the extremes, and in the middle. Those sort of, sort of, by chance, you sort of fit well at a, qu at a quarter in and three quarters in, or a quarter from either end. But anyway, there's totally just lack of fit here. We have not found the best model, or even a good model yet. So would, would I use this model to predict pressure? Well, the R squared is very, very high, so it does create very good predictions, but I would not use this model because it does not fit the data. I think we can do better. Okay, so that's some of that is what I would give for the solution to that part. Interpret R squared, so, right, the, uh, this model explains 99.2% of the variability in the response. That's the interpretation. <clears throat> um, okay, can we fit a better model? So there's lots of suggestions here. Um, we could fit a quadratic model. And given that this is a chapter on polynomial regression, I suggest that we do that. Um, but we also have a suggestion here from the box Cox that we could take the log transform of the response variable. So um, I think in the course of this video, we will try both of those scenarios. But certainly, I think the quadratic model is, uh, is, pr is probably the one to try. But who knows? One could be better than the other, and, and we will find out. All right. So we've interpreted R squared. Let's copy this code down, and then we'll modify it for our um, situation. OK, so let's fit a better model. And let's do the boiling point squared first. Um, now, there's a couple ways of fitting higher order terms. We could either create the term in the data set by doing a mutate. Or you could do this function, this i function, which allows you to put in functions of variables right in the, the model equation. And it will basically create that variable on the fly and fit it. So let's call this uh, b2, because we've got a boiling, uh, boiling squared in the model. And let's knit this again. And we'll, we'll make some comparisons with the simple linear regression.
<clears throat> okay, so here's our better model with boiling squared. Uh, residuals, these these residuals follow the line much better than the other one. The other one showed a little bit of curvature. Um, both sets look pretty good, but this is better. Observation 2 is more inf is influential here, but it's not really peaking out as, as strongly as Observation 1 was before. Observation 2 is influential in part because it is um, uh, sort of an outlier in the X direction. It has high leverage. This is what we want to see. Those are perfect. So no structure at all for the fitted values, uh, the boiling point, and now boiling point squared. Okay, those are those are beautiful residuals, and <laughs> the peak is exactly on one. So we have we have resolved the issue um, of normality by adding the boiling point squared in the model. Uh, the added variable plots both look fantastic. The points follow the line. There aren't any outliers or influential observations here. Everything's great. All right, summary. And boiling point is uh, significant. Uh, boiling point squared is significant. And, whoa, 99.84%. So that may be the highest R squared you ever see in your career. <laughs> um, so, um, so this is this is fantastic. I, I would I would go ahead and interpret this model. This is very good. Um, now, let me make a few points now. So, right, the rest of this is is just uh, um, regardless of which scale you choose, provide an equation to predict the pressure from boiling point, and write a short summary uh, pointing out any limitations of your analysis. And then um, it's down here. Oh, and then uh, assuming that you called it that. Uh, then the equation with the code below. Okay, so this is sort of to help you write the equation if you wanted to, if you wanted to use that. Just a way to get you started. Okay, so uh, you guys are good at writing equations at this point. Let me talk about a couple other um, things about this model now. Because boiling point is not centered, the only hypothesis test that we can interpret in here is, in terms of the boiling point, is the highest order term. So boiling point squared is significant, but we cannot interpret boiling point the main effect. But we can if we if we center the value. So if we do this instead, so we've got recall, we have in our dat boil we have we created this variable underscore sen for centered where the, the mean value of that is zero. So if you make that the variable instead, it won't change. Let's see, is there a way I can do this? I can show you both. Yes. It's not going to change the model fit at all, but what it will do is it will change um, one of the coefficients and the p-values. So this is the old way. Okay, so this is boiling F. This is not the centered version. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull, I'm not going to refresh that window, and instead I'm going to pull over here the preview window that from our studio, and we're going to take a look at the at the differences. I think it's down. Let's try this. Okay, I hope this isn't too hard to see. You can, see, except for the scientific notation, which is not that important, right? Over here we have 0 0.004, and over here in scientific notation we have 0 0.004. We have all the same values for the boiling centered squared term 10.95 for the t statistic, and the p value is 1.24 times 10 to the 11th. But the other terms have changed. The boiling point centered values changed, and look at the p-value is different now too. So, but we can actually interpret this test now. So it, so we've got this. The linear term has a positive slope, and it's significant, and we can think about that separately from the quadratic curve term, also being significant. 
In fact, if this was basically a standard parabola where where it's sort of horizontal instead of sloped. Um, this is a hard thing to describe with words. Um, so, right, this parabola, it's it has it has this blue slope in addition to it being curved. Where you know what a standard parabola looks like. Uh, yeah, like this, where it's sort of just horizontal, right? The you'd have a sort of a horizontal line that describes the the slope of this parabola. In that case, um, you you could. Sorry, I'm flicking all over the place. So if you could actually decide that you could test the the slope of the parabola and say, hey, there's no slope here if that was a large p-value. So you've got sort of a standard parabola, but there is curvature. And so you could actually remove the centered the, the slope term if you wanted to. So anyway, that's that's just something that comes up. Let me refresh the HTML now. So I've got the centered one in there. Um, all of these residuals in the it, using the centered Fahrenheit instead of the non-centered Fahrenheit, the all of these plots are going to be identical. So they all look exactly the same as before. Okay, so I really like I like the uh, the quadratic one. Let's take a quick detour and look at what happens if you were to do the log transformation. So I'm going to um, put in a a triple tick here and say quadratic. And then I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to do the log transform. And uh, it's just going to be sort of a, where should I put it? I really don't want it to interrupt everything else. Let's just put it down here, log version. This is sort of log y. OK. <clears throat> so let's see. You know what? I've never done it, this on the, I think we should create a new, a new variable. Okay. Give me a second to steal some code from myself. Okay. So what I've just done is I've in the data set I've mutated to create a new variable called pressure log two, where I take the log of pressure to the base of two. And then I'm going to use that as the y variable with boiling point. And it could be centered boiling point. It doesn't, doesn't matter. And then we'll look at the, the summary. Let's also look at the diagnostic plots of that. OK, I'll do the summary at the end, actually, down here. So it follows the same order. And we'll see what it looks like if we were to take the log transform. All right, let's go look at it in the HTML. And I will jump down to the log. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> Why is the quadratic version at the bottom? OK, anyway, I think I did something wrong. Quadratic file. Oh, I think I just have the quadratic term uh, title in there twice. Let me just satisfy my curiosity about why that's weird. Yep, OK. Sorry about that. OK, so let's do the log version. So we made the log variable. We fit the linear model. We're looking at the diagnostic plots. Looks pretty good in terms of normality. There's a little weirdness down here. And we see observation 2. Well, I'm not quite sure which one observation 2 is. But observation 2 is so a bit influential here. And it's because it is an outlier in the x direction in terms of boiling point. These residual plots look 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 good. They're not as good as the quadratic uh, model, but they look good. And after the log transform, the value of one is inside the interval. So we have certainly made an improvement by shifting shifting this from zero over closer to one, but not quite as good as we'd like. There's no information for the added variable plot because there's only one variable in the model. 
and we are we have a significant um, slope which is obvious from the plot and we're explaining 99.8 percent of the variability in pressure so the log the log version looks just fine you know if you approach this very naively and you did the log you'd have a model that I think fits fits really well and you're making good predictions let me page up just for a quick moment this is what we had for the quadratic model for the R squared 99.84 so we do a little bit better with the quadratic model. And in terms of model fit, they are effectively equivalent. They, they both fit the data. All right. <clears throat> so let me do the last part with you, which is to write this equation. And let's write the equation based on the quadratic, um, the quadratic uh, model. OK, so regardless of which scale you chose for the analysis, provide an equation to predict pressure from boiling point. Write a short summary pointing out any limitations of your analysis. All right, so let's assume that we are called our model this. It was actually sort of B2, I guess. Let's go up and take a peek. Okay, linear model B2. Uh, we can look at the names of that summary object. Mm. Oh, I think I maybe did not run this code in the console. So once I run that linear model code and create that object, now it's in there. All right, so then we can we can run. We've we've done these equations before. We can put in the R and B two is the one that we used. We've got boiling point, and this is actually the centered version. So we've got actually, okay, so I'm going a little too fast, I realize. Okay, let me slow down for a moment. Uh, let's just uh, knit this and take a peek at the equation, and we'll come back and we'll modify this. On these technical details, it's, it's quite important I don't go too fast. Okay, so here is the equation we're, we're working at. Let me make this a bit bigger. So we've got pressure. The predicted pressure is equal to the intercept. Let's see, we've got, can we get all this? We can't quite get this on the screen. So this is the intercept. We see that it's times 10 to the first power. So it's basically multiply this by, by 10. So we have 19.3 is the actual, or excuse me, 19.7 is the actual value. And that's what's appearing down here, 19.7. And then we have the slope with respect to boiling point. But we actually have the centered version of this variable. Okay, so we need to correctly indicate uh, what we're doing here. So l let me page up for a bit. In fact, I just pressed home and I'm scrolling down. Here is the mean boiling point, okay? So I'm gonna copy that value. Oh, uh, what's a better way? I mean, this is the value, we could use this. So let's use this as the mean. Okay, hang in there with me for a moment. So I'm gonna, so let's see, what do I want? Uh, you know what, I like what I did when I, when I described how we did this last time. Let me just write it out very clumsily and then we'll go back, back and we'll make a, a beautiful equation. So we have pressure equals um, the, the intercept. So let me look at a summary down here to get the values. Okay, so the intercept down there is 19.7 plus um, 0 0.417, that's this value. It's times 10 to the negative 1, so you move the decimal place over to the left 1, and you have 417 times, now we, this is really the boiling in Fahrenheit minus the mean. All right, that's, excuse me, <laughs> because that's that's how we created that new variable. All of this together is the centered boiling point. So we can just have it like that. 
plus, and then we've got uh, this number times 10 to the negative 3. So we move the decimal place over to the left three places, something like that, times the centered variable squared. So that's, that's what I want to end up with. And um, I want to do that in a um, sort of using this fancier code so that all the values automatically fill. Is it worth it? Uh, probably not. <laughs> probably just um, just write this and you're done. <laughs> That's what I would do at this point. Uh, but for those of you who are who are um, in it to win it, I will uh, show you the rest of how to how to typeset this. So uh, let's do this. Okay. So we've got all three terms here. And that's this is pretty close, right? So we've got the intercept here, plus this is the uh, the second term, so 0 0.417 times the boiling point, plus this is the third value, which is the 0 0.004 times the boiling point squared. But now we need to add in these these means, okay? So I'm going to wrap this in parentheses. I'm going to add here the mean. So I had the code from before. It's not still in there, is it? No. Nope. Uh, let me go grab that code. Here it is. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to come back over here. And I'm going to sort of simplify this code a little bit. I'm just going to take the boiling point and wrap it with mean. And I'm going to do signif to give that three significant digits. And so what's in here should become the value but I need to do one more thing I need to wrap it with those left the left tick marks so that that is rendered as a value all right let's take a pause and knit this and see if it works before I copy and paste it down here and you know if it if it doesn't work now I want it to make I want to make sure that it's working in one place before I copy it um, Okay, so we'll refresh this and we'll jump to the bottom where that equation is. Aha, I need to subtract the mean. But otherwise, uh, otherwise this is starting to look pretty good. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to copy this whole thing, which is the centered boiling point, and replace this down here with it. And then I've got that squared. I need to make a little more space. That looks pretty good. All right, let's knit this. And I think we're done. I haven't talked about interpretation, uh, the limitations. Okay. Well, this looks this looks like the right terms. And we've got um, the mean centered boiling point. This looks pretty good. I have this little extra space here in front of the boiling point F. Um, I know why that's there. We can remove it. Um, I put those spaces in there when I just have um, the coefficient before the, the term just to add a little space between the coefficient and the, and the label. But this looks pretty good. You know what? I might do this to five significant digits. Um, just to be a little more sensitive, but it doesn't matter. Okay, but re recall, like this, this equation right here, just fine. That's uh, that's all you need. <clears throat> um, you could all, you could replace the mean with the actual value if you wanted to. Um, all right, one more point I think is about the limitations. So, what limitations are are there? So, in any study. A regression model is going to apply only over the domain of the data that were sampled. So the if we look at the plots here, um, this had to do with well, you know what? I don't know what the altitudes are here. I sort of wanted to get those. I guess we don't know what that is without we can make the predictions of altitudes. Let me go back up here. 
Um, it is over the range of heights or altitudes over the Himalayas. Um, I don't know what limitations there are. I guess it applies. It applies above sea level up to, who knows, 10,000, 15,000 feet um, over the range of those altitudes. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's probably some error in the measurements because of uh, old thermometers and things like that and, and these uh, fragile barometers that were, that were being used. But, um, but that sort of gets smoothed out in the modeling. So I don't know if there's many more limitations than that. Um, it probably requires that you've got water that is pure or, you know, it, that comes from the snow. So if there's any um, differences in the snow in the Himalayas compared to water derived from other places, um, that could be a problem, right? I know Himalayan salt is a is a thing, right? But I don't think that salt is in the snow on the mountains where they're probably deriving the water from. So I I, I would say th those are my best guesses for what the limitations are here. Um, anyway, I think we found a heck of a model. So very happy with that. And uh, hope you learned something. All right, see you in the next one.